Let's get into the nitty gritty of what makes the Cruise Master ATX suspension so special. You're special. You're special. First up, let's touch on why Cruise Master at all. They say imitation is the best form of flattery, but you really don't want an imitation suspension underneath your caravan. We have seen the effects of a, a, uh, a copy of Cruise Master suspension fail out in the real world, and it's not a very nice experience at all. So uh, that's why we go Cruise Master, good Australian company. They've got a really good track record with you know, quality suspension and really good after sales service and backup when you need it. So as with most things, it's the little things that let the cheaper imitations down. Next time you're cruising up the highway and you pull in be behind a caravan and, and you can see that it's got an independent suspension set up, it's pretty easy to spot these days. A lot of the cheaper imitations of the Cruise Master style suspension struggle to get the camber out of the rear wheels. And uh, I've seen it firsthand, and what it does is choose the inside of your tire out and you end up blowing tires. Now for the most part, those, those imitations do a pretty good job, like everything, but these things always let you down when you're the furthest away from home. And it's such an important component of your caravan, it's not something you should really cheap out on. That's why we chose Cruise Master, and that's why I would choose Cruise Master again. The next thing you really want to think about is to go airbags or to go spring. There's heaps of reasons to, for both. Uh, you could say that the spring may be more reliable and it's more proven. We personally know people that have the Cruise Master XT airbag and have had it for at least five years and it has been punished and has never let him down. So when we were thinking about the whole airbag thing, I, I do think about you know the downsides of things before I buy them. Um, you know, will you puncture a hole in the airbag? Will an airline let you down? And, and they are proven. They've been using them for a long time now. And then to go to the next level up, which is the ATX, is basically a truck airbag. So, you know, not, not just in the caravan industry, but in the automotive industry in general, airbags are widely used and uh, they're proven to be very reliable. The single biggest thing you'll use or notice when you have airbags in a caravan is the ability to level your caravan up without using wheel chocks. It seems so trivial and seems to be such a great expense to go to to be able to do that. But, you know, I've said it before, when you're in this level of caravan and, you know, everyone can go out and have a look and see how much they're worth, it is one of those things that I think you just tick that box. It is that handy. Now that we have had it, I don't think I'd go without it. The other thing airbags allow is a really smooth ride of the caravan. Like I said, we have tested this ourselves. Uh, we're on a private dirt road. I got in the back of the caravan. I got my wife to drive and it, it really does ride really well. And then you can also feel it in the car. It doesn't move the car around. The fact that the front and rear wheel are linked as one airbag with an airline means to get the, the drawbar height to the exact level isn't as critical as if it were spring. If you had a low drawbar height with a spring set up, it means the front wheel is gonna have more weight on it than the rear all the time. With an airbag, it's always even, and that'll make it ride better, and the tires will wear more evenly. The other benefit to running airbags is the fact that it allows you to alter the overall height of the caravan for when you're parking it up at home. We do know people that option the airbags because of this reason, and it allowed them to get it in under the carport. There's so many little benefits with it. Um, ultimately, you really wanna buy it because it rides better. Those other things really add up to something that makes a, a caravan a lot more user-friendly. And it's a lot cheaper to install airbags in your caravan than alter a whole carport like what we had to go through. Last thing when you're thinking about whether you should go airbags or not is think about the on sale of your caravan. Um, these things are starting to get to the point where at a certain price points, people are going to expect it to have certain features. Uh, we just wanted to keep it relevant. I can't see us selling this van for quite a while. In saying that, you really don't keep anything forever. So it really may help on sell the caravan at a later date and for a better price. Okay, so you've decided to go airbags. The next thing to consider is whether you get XT or ATX. Is it worth the extra cost to go to ATX? Uh, I found this really hard to justify myself. In the end, it was really a, a why not for me, but there are a lot of key points and a lot of small things that really take the ATX to the next level. So one thing, and it is probably relevant with XT as well, in a caravan of this size, that ATX suspension is rated at 4.5 tonne. So like I said, with the whole resale thing, the ATX will add to that, but then also the ability for someone to possibly upgrade this caravan to four and a half tonne. The only other really thing that I can see that would be letting it down is to just change the hitch over to a four and a half tonne hitch, 
which is which is reasonably easy to do and i don't think an engineer would have a problem with upgrading this caravan there's so many american trucks out there on the market so that is a real consideration when you're into this sort of you know caravan and price range the next owner may actually be using an american truck to tow this and may want to upgrade it which that allows you to do some of the key mechanical advantages of atx versus xt are the fact that the stub axle and bearings in atx are even bigger again than XT. The stub axle in XT suspension is 50 mil, the ATX 63. The bearings are massive, and like I said, we have towed with the XT spring before and done 16,000 Ks on a set of bearings. And when I pulled them out, they were still like brand new. They are serious bearings, and you can be confident in what you're towing down the road isn't gonna spit a wheel off. Cruise Master used really good components, and the ATX takes that to the next step. The next real difference between XT and ATX is the style of airbag they used. I have touched on it before. XT use a double bellows style bag. ATX use a rolling sleeve. The rolling sleeve is heavily used in the trucking industry, which goes to prove its reliability out in the field. The other major thing with ATX is the fact that they use a single big bore shock. The dual shock absorber on the XT and a lot of other suspensions out there looks good in theory, but if one of those shocks fail, the next shock will fail like that as it's trying to do twice the amount of work. But having one larger shock will actually make it a cheaper component to replace as opposed to having to replace eight when you only need to replace four. The fact that the shock is so much bigger and it is a piggyback reservoir shock will really help on those corrugated dirt roads and help to control that caravan. Once the oil gets too hot in a shock absorber, they just stop working. They are no longer a shock absorber and the spring and the airbag takes over and your caravan will be bouncing down the road. So the shock absorber is very important, especially in an airbag setup. Righto guys, so we'll jump under the van and I'll show you all the components, how far it moves up and down. We'll get the measuring tape out and, and really go over it with a fine tooth comb. I know when I was looking at this caravan and we decided to go airbags, I couldn't watch enough about it. It is such a cool feature of, you know, when you're buying a caravan like this. One more thing before we do that, let's assume you're getting airbags, whether it be XT or ATX. The next thing to consider is the control system that you opt. We have level three wireless in this and the wireless feature is really handy. However, there is one thing I would change if I had to do it again, I'll get the level four and the auto level. Once you finish camping and before you set off, you have to bring the caravan up to a preset ride height. Now, that seems really easy, but if you're on uneven ground and the caravan is loaded unevenly, you can't just go off the pressure in the airbags. You need to actually visually see that both sides are actually at the same travel. Now, the auto level kit does that for you. You flick a button, it has little valves and arms underneath, and it will preset that level. So it has been quite a few times, or nearly every time actually, I'll set off from camp, and it's not until I can get a nice dead flat road, I jump back out and check that the ride height's set before you set off and do your next three to 400 Ks. So that is a little downside. It's a real first world problem, I know, but if you had to pick on something with the control system, that would be it. I would go without the wireless just to have the auto level feature. I think it would be a much better setup. All right, guys, so we're ducking the van here and we'll just have a look at the level three wireless control panel. So as you can see, you've got an air outlet so you can air up the tires using the compressor that the airbags use. You got your wireless key fob. You get a couple of them with every kit. You have a power on switch with you individual gauges for side to side and an air drain button that lets you drain the water out of the tank. In most cases, that control panel is in a hatch on the outside of the caravan. Our layout of caravan didn't allow for that. And to be honest, I would do it that way again. Uh, it's just once the door's locked, no one can touch it. An external hatch, you have to lock that hatch every time. Or, you know, it's not something you want people mucking around with. It's not something you want the key fob going missing to. So that is something you can consider if you're setting up a caravan. I'd probably ask to have it just inside the door like that. Very handy. Just gonna take a quick break here, guys, to show you the quick fit brackets, including heavy duty attachment points. It is as easy as what it looks on screen. The heavy duty attachment points also offer a handy tie down point. I'll put a link at the end of the video so you can go and check them out. Righto, let's get back to it. Righto, so I've worn a white shirt to crawl under the caravan. Not my best move, but anyway. So as you can see, everything is just oversized and overkill with the ATX. It really is well made and it, it, it is robust. 
So the size of the shock absorbers is something that really got me and it will make a difference to the quality of the ride, especially on those corrugated dirt roads. The other major component to consider is whether you go drum or disc brakes. We've got a hydraulic disc brake set up in this caravan and if you own a Toyota Land Cruiser as we do, it actually pulls up better with the caravan attached. I think the brakes in the caravan are actually better than the Land Cruiser brakes. So it wasn't something that we were overly concerned about as the drum setup does work quite well and it is proven, but that hydraulic setup is just that little bit better again. The fact that the drums can't fill up with dust and wear the pads out, it will just make maintenance that little bit easier also. And don't forget Resar, once again, it will be a nice little feature to add when you're writing a description to on sell your caravan one day. With all independent suspensions, it is worth crawling under every now and then and checking on the swing arm bolts and actually do the research on what torque they need to be. It is something that really we found when we were traveling around, uh, not so much on the Cruise Master stuff. A lot of the other suspensions, they seem to loosen off occasionally. So it is something worth keeping an eye on and it is written in as a maintenance item. The other thing going along with that is make sure that it has had a good wheel alignment. Unlike a leaf spring setup, an independent trailing arm suspension needs to be wheel aligned like a car and it needs to have toe in to a certain degree like a car for it to track correctly down the road and not chew the tires out. Alright guys, so we are at full height and it is exactly 975 millimeters. So that's at full height, let's drop it down and we'll see what it measures. Right so we've got 835 mil. So that's a total of 140 millimeters in travel, which if you double that at 280 millimeters, that's the maximum cross slope you could be on and still be able to level your van up without using blocks or ramps or anything like that. So it is a quite a lot of travel. Uh, don't forget, that is also how much you can lower the van to get it in under an awning. From, from fully down to ride height, you're probably looking at about 60 to 80 millimeters. Uh, so it does make quite a difference. Anyway, guys, I hope that answers any questions you've had about airbags and ATX suspension. These are all the things I wanted to know when we we're looking at the caravan. So don't forget, guys, you only live once. Get out there and enjoy it. I hope that answers. I hope. No, I watched the first one that you did. It was fine. It was definitely something I wanted to know more information, but it just wasn't available to me at the time. So I thought, fuck it, have it anyway. <laughs> Righto. Hope that answers all your airbag questions. No, I like the righto. That's Let's the just right. do the, the first one. <laughs> <I'm out. laughs>